Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, I want to share with you my evening skincare routine when I'm using tretinoin. I recently filmed an update video showing my experiences having been on tret for the past three months. I'm going to leave a link to that video up there because it's very much like part two of that. In the comment section, so many of you guys said, thank you so much for sharing our journey, but how do we incorporate it successfully in a skincare routine? And that's what I want to sit down and film for you in today's video. So sit back, relax, let me show you my anti-aging skincare routine using tretinoin. Now, before we get into this video, just a usual reminder to do all that youtube -y stuff if you haven't already, if you could reach down and give this video a thumbs up and a like. It's actually quite daunting getting here on camera with zero makeup, joined by my new best friend, this giant zit between the eyebrows. So you know what, if you do appreciate the content, if you could give it a thumbs up and a like, it's a great way of supporting me and the channel, because it'll encourage YouTube to push this video out to a wider audience. Also, around 75% of the people that watch the content here on the channel aren't subscribed, so I'd say if that's you, if you're a regular viewer but you're not yet joined part of our Mad About Skin family, reach down and click that subscribe button because I know we'd love to have you as a member. Now, with all that being said, shall we cut the waffle and just delve into this evening routine? Now, when you're starting tretinoin or any high strength retinoid, for the first three months at least, you're going to want to take it a little bit slow. There are a couple of ingredients that you do want to look out for and include in your skincare routine and a couple to avoid. You think the ones to avoid are easier, so let's cover off those first. I think any exfoliating acids are like a no-no in the same routine. You know, retinoids can be quite irritating irritating on the skin. You don't want to heap on more irritation by reaching for that exfoliating acid. I think the same thing goes for ascorbic or l acid, vitamin C in its purest form. You know, whilst we all love a little glow up in our life, I'd say keep your vitamin C in the opposite skincare routine to your tretinoin, because that way you'll just minimise the risk of any irritation. Beyond that, generally speaking, most other things can be paired in a skincare routine, and I'll talk you through the ones that I like to include and the reasons why. In terms of things I would definitely, definitely say are non-negotiable in your routine, when you're on tret. First and foremost, ceramides. Ceramides are fantastic because they build up the barrier function of the skin, they hydrate, they're just a really, really nice addition to any skincare routine. You don't have to be on tret to enjoy ceramides. In fact, I think they work well in everyone's skincare routine and I've captured the reasons why in a recent video, which I'll link up there. But I think specifically when you're on tret knowing it's really important to have those peptides because in those first three months, you know, you can see a little bit of degradation in the skin barrier and by reaching for those ceramides, it'll just keep that in tip top condition and help your skin fight to remain healthy throughout. Also, I like to use some calming and soothing ingredients such as allantonin and panthenol. Again, because that tretinoin is quite irritating on the skin, you know, some ingredients to offset that are never a bad thing. Of course, I started azelaic acid like two years ago, and I would definitely say it pairs beautifully well with a retinoids because it actually offsets any redness, peeling, and sensitivity that you can get from tretinoin or any other high-strength retinoid. Azelaic acid, tretinoin, they work beautifully well together, but I usually say make sure you've incorporated your azelaic acid successfully before you start in your tretinoin journey, which is something that I certainly did. Now, with all that said, shall we actually just get some products on my face? And off camera, I actually cleansed. You know, I'm no multitasker. I couldn't do it for you here on camera. It would be a hot, hot mess. And I reached for this product. This is the Numbers in Easy Peasy Cleansing Oil. I love this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it gets everything off the skin. I had a couple of layers of SPF, a little concealer on the skin, and this melted it all away like that. It's also got some fragrance in here. Now, I've kept the rest of my skincare routine fragrance-free, because I think when you're using tretinoin, anything that can just eliminate risk of further irritation has to be a good thing. So I would recommend, you know, whilst I like fragrance skincare, when we're talking using it alongside tret, I'd keep it fragrance free if you can. I do like an element of the sensorial though, so I reach for a fragrance cleansing balm that's on the skin like 60 seconds as a way of getting that. I've also got a linen scented candle burning in the corner, because that's a great hack for again, just getting that sensorial without actually having to apply the fragrance to your skin. I only used this step, I didn't follow with a gel cleanser. Now that might shock a lot of people, but if you use this properly, really massage it into the skin, allow it to emulsify when you hit it with some lukewarm water, then work it in for another 20 seconds, you get a really effective cleanse and it only leaves the very, very faintest film on the skin. That film actually isn't a bad thing because that's going to keep the skin, you know, hydrated and protected throughout the routine. And I felt if I went in with like a gel cleanser after, I might just be starting with my skin a little bit drier than I would like. And that's just a way of preventing any further dryness from that tretinoin. So, I've got the skin ready, we're cleansed, we're clean, we've got a fresh canvas, and now I like to protect the skin. Let me explain what that is. So, the areas where I get most sensitivity from tretinoin are the eyes and around the corners of the mouth. I've been on it for three months now, and I don't know if you can see, there is still a little bit dryness around the mouth, and that's as a result of that tretinoin. I didn't have that before. These areas, along the size of the nose as well, can be most sensitive and most prone to that redness, peeling, and irritation from the tretinoin. So, before I do anything else, I like to protect them. Just put a cream, a barrier on there, so if I do get any of that tret on those delicate areas, it's not going to cause too much of a problem. 
So, for the eye, I reached for this product. This is the CN Q10 Intense Ice Cream. So, so good. Not only does it pro provide that barrier, it's also packed full of everything you want in eye cream. I covered the reasons why, for one pound, this is the only eye cream you need in your life in a recent shorts video, which I'll link up there. Promise me you'll watch it, because honestly, the ingredients list in this, second to none. And if you're paying more than a pound for your eye cream, they're robbing you. This absolute perfection. It also glides onto the skin so, so well. And it's just a really, really nice product. You can use it on the eyelid as well. And I, whilst I don't put my tretinoin in any of these areas, and I wouldn't advise you do either, this just provides a barrier in case, you know, I get a little slap happy and sometimes it might migrate upwards. This just provides that barrier alongside giving some great anti-aging benefit too. Such a gorgeous product. Now, if you don't want to reach for that product, you could use this. This is the Dr. Sam Nightly Eye Serum. This is like £40, so it's a lot more expensive. But what these both have is in shea butter which will provide a little bit of a barrier a bit of protection in those delicate areas now for the other areas i'm going to reach in for this this is the mad about skin lip balm which is launching this month literally cannot wait to bring this to you but the reason i chose this is it's actually got beeswax in here which kind of provides a bit of an occlusive seal on those areas to protect them it's also got some hydrators which are just going to maximize the area protecting the area from any of that dryness it's got some antioxidants too which is absolutely fantastic you can use any balm to be honest it doesn't have to be mine um, the La Roche-Posay Sicker Plus Balm would work really, really well as well. Just look for something that's relatively thick and emollient because that's what's going to protect these areas. And this just works beautifully. You could technically use this on the eye, but I think it might just be too rich for the delicate eye area, which is why I use it on the other areas. I'm prone to a little sensitivity. <laughs> I kind of guess while I'm at it, I probably should put some on the lip as well because let's be honest, it is a lip balm after all. And I do say never, ever, ever get your tret on the lip or on the eyelid. And I'd be very careful on the neck as well. Some, uh, some people's neck will tolerate it, others won't. Mine certainly won't. So I put that on, everything's sealed in. And I'd say when you're on tret, actually, the first half of your routine should all be about protection. You know, minimizing the water loss through your cleanse, protecting those delicate areas. Then you can get on with actually applying the main part of your skincare routine. So for me, I want maximum hydration. So I'm gonna reach for two products. Got this, this is the Make Prem Extra Moisture Essence, which contains panthenol. I said earlier in the video, look out for things that calm, soothe the skin, allantonin and panthenol being like the gold standard. This is great, a little extra hydration hydration for the skin and it doesn't weigh you down. It feels so, so nice. If you are the sort of person that loves multiple layers of hydrators in your skincare routine, then honestly, you can go wild at this point. Just make sure there's nothing that's too potentially irritating in the skin. But the maximum amount of hydration you can get is obviously going to be the benefit because it's going to offset those retinos, those tret dryness that you can get. So that's on the skin. And then I'm going to go in with this. This is the Mad About Skin Got You Covered Super Serum. Now, I created this to kind of complement all other steps in your skincare routine. And the reason I'm reaching for this is it's got peptides in here, but not copper peptides. And there's, you know, the jury is out there a little bit. Some dermatologists say it's fine, some say you shouldn't. But I don't like to use copper peptides alongside my tretinoin because I do think, you know, the risk of maybe some interaction and increased sensitivity is there. All other peptides are fine. And also you can use copper peptides with other forms of retinoids. It's just tretinoin that I'd be super, super careful for. Honestly, I think I'm being overly cautious, but for me, that's just something in those early stages that I wanted to avoid, you know, minimize the risk of any additional irritation. So in this serum, you've got two types of non-copper peptides, which are fantastic for hydrating. They've also got some plumping effect, and I just love the way that they work on the skin. You've also got some antioxidants, which you know what, are nice. I like to apply my antioxidants morning and evening for maximum protection. But more importantly in here, you've got a 5% concentration of azelaic acid. I said earlier, azelaic acid is key with tretinoin because it can help offset some of those side effects and like a beautiful, perfect pairing. I think 5% is a really nice concentration to go for. You know, you could push it to 10% if you wanted. It's all personal preference, but I think keeping it relatively low and consistent is what works best for me, minimizing any irritation and offsets those side effects. So I like to use two pumps of this. My skin is still a little bit damp from that essence that I just put on, which is great because this like all serums just applies better on damp skin and oh, it just sinks in so so well it's also got panthenol in here so you're getting that double whammy of that calming and soothing and it's got some other really nice botanicals to hydrate i definitely noticed after i put this on my skin is definitely plump it's more hydrated and that's kind of what we want when you approach the tret you want your skin to be in like maximum health maximum hydration to minimize any risk of those side effects
Now at this point we're going to come on to the tret itself and I'm going to be using something called the sandwich method which is what my dermatologist actually taught me and recommended. Now you, she said to use this particularly at the start of your tret journey but honestly I love it so much I think I'm just going to continue using it irrespective. You can also use this with any other retinoid as well. It doesn't have to be tret and it's a great way of minimising the risk of sensitivity and irritation just easing you into your tret journey. So the way that this works is you put a moisturiser on the skin then your tretinoin then layer on top with another moisturiser so it's that sandwich it in, the tret being like the filler in that sandwich. This means that your skin maximum hydration and then it's going to be topped off with a more occlusive moisturiser which is going to seal everything in and prevent trans epidermal water loss. So the two moisturisers I traditionally use are this. The first one is the Alteris Dermatologist Moisturising Fluid. So the reason I start with this in the sandwich method is it's got lots of hydrators, it's got some great busters in here, it's just going to be a really really nice moisturiser but really importantly it doesn't have any oils in. So oils could protect, prevent the tretinoin actually going through and getting to work on the skin which I don't want to be the case so I'm going to put this on first and then I'm going to seal with an oil based moisturiser afterwards. This is so good. You use this morning, evening, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous moisturiser. And one I would definitely, definitely recommend. It's also got some urea in here, which is a fantastic humectant and gives a very, very, very light exfoliation. So on those areas where I have got you know, a little bit of dryness, a little bit of peeling, that will help at the margins, but it's not an exfoliating acid, so there's going to be zero irritation with it. Now let's come on to the tretinoin, and for me it's this. This is Treclin, which is a combination of a low strength tretinoin alongside clindamycin, which is an antibiotic. I'm going to be using this for the first four or five months of the journey just to help minimise any um, breakouts that I've been getting in my adult acne, and then I'm just going to move on to straight tretinoin. That's what I worked out with my prescriber, my dermatologist, but everyone's prescription will be entirely different. And standard tretinoin, you know, you don't have to, if you haven't got acne, there's no point having the one with the clindamycin in. This is just for my personal skin type, but it's the tretin here that we're talking about in this specific video. Video. So you're going to want to apply a pea size amount, which is a useless, useless definition because who keeps peas in the bathroom? I always say this, they need to change that up. Use like uh, two thirds of your small fingernail, that will be more than enough. I dot it around and then I very gently work it in. Now I think the temptation is always, always, always to like go in and smush everything around. I do that with all my products, but not my tretinoin. You can be a little bit, little bit more lavish with the application because you have actually protected those delicate areas, but I still think precision is key. Don't forget the nose because it'll help with blackheads and congestion there. And then just let that sink into the skin. I try not to rub too vigorously because you don't want it to be, you know, irritated or causing any friction on the skin. I let that kind of go to work. I'm then going to follow with a more occlusive moisturiser, one that contains ceramides and oils to just really lock everything in. The oils will provide a little occlusive layer to prevent trans epidermal water loss, but because you've already put the tret on, it's not going to impact how it performs. This is why I go for an oil-free moisturiser to start, which is the Alterist one, Then I follow with one with an oil to just seal everything in. If you want to keep it super simple and you want to keep it really basic and cost efficient you can just use the oil moisturizer twice honestly that oil is not going to make the world's biggest difference just if you can stretch two products great if you can't you can just use these oil moisturizers in the first step and the second step of the um, sandwich method and it'll work just as well so you've got two options. This is the Mad About Skin Maximum Impact Moisturiser, and this is the Crave Great Barrier Relief Serum. Both of these have a fantastic blend of facial oils alongside humectants, and they kind of just do everything you want. Um, for me, I'm going to go in with the Mad About Skin Moisturiser, just because I feel it's slightly more lightweight than the Great Barrier Relief Serum. And this has got Tamanu oil in, which I love, but it's got a bit of a funky scent, which isn't my absolute favourite. Some people love it, some people don't. It's all personal preference, but that's probably why I'm gravitating more towards this. Both have ceramides. You could actually, and I would would include this if it wasn't for the fact I've run out but this is the Stratia liquid gold would also work really really well as well ceramides oils moisturizers just really really good put this on the skin and we are done we are ready for bed and that is your skin in a full tretinoin skincare routine hopefully in this video I've been able to demonstrate how you can successfully incorporate tretinoin into your skincare routine without risking too much sensitivity redness and irritation this has worked really really well for me and I'd say the two key elements of that sandwich method and of course making sure you protect those delicate areas with a bit of a barrier first I'll leave some other recommendations for my favorite barrier products that I could use because there are so so many out there my preferences for that lip balm or the Cicaplast balm by La Roche-Posay but there are lots of others so I'll give you some more variety in the description box below. Let me know what you think. Do you like this routine? Is there anything you change up? Do you have any product recommendations? I'd love to hear from you and wherever you are in the world guys stay safe, stay well, love your skin. Take care. Bye!